Hello and welcome to Horror and Monster Collectibles where today we are going to be doing an updated room tour of the Slaughtered Lamb collection. It's been a while since I've done the last room tour and uh, a lot of things have changed in the Slaughtered Lamb. I've sold a bunch of stuff and I've gained a bunch of stuff. Uh, there's a lot of stuff in here that I haven't uh, shown anybody or haven't had a chance to do any reviews on. So I figured I would do an updated tour for you guys. Uh, I, I'm backed up on reviews but uh, I plan on trying to get you know, reviews on some of these pieces up as soon as possible in the next few months. Uh, there's a lot of stuff to cover here, so we're going to move through things as quickly as possible. Uh, if you see something that you want more information on, then feel free to comment and I'll be happy to help you out with some answers. A lot of people who watch my room tours are kind of new to collecting and uh, welcome if you are. Uh, I get a lot of questions on how to start and things like that. Um, the biggest thing I could say is collect within your budget. Don't go into debt collecting. Collect what you want to collect and don't worry about what other people think. Uh, it's your hobby, it's your collection, it's very personal to you. So get stuff that matters to you most. And that's like the best advice I can give you guys. So let's get to it. All right guys, so first up I'll show you the living room where I have all of the OG Uni Monsters. Um, I got these on Amazon and I just framed them, but you can still find them from fairly cheap. Then over here we have Creations of Bram Stoker's Dracula wall relief, which I love. It's my favorite Dracula movie, even over the original one. And, uh, up here is the entrance to the slaughtered lamb and we have a life-size slaughtered lamb sign from American Werewolf in London. And this is done by Horror Express Studios. Uh, it is one of one. He only made one and uh, that's all he's going to make. But I absolutely love it. Over here we have a zombie hand guitar hanger. And then of course I have Frankenstein on my guitar. You go over here and this is the entrance to the room all right guys i know you see action figures and we will get to all the action figures at the end of the tour up first is a mondo print of the texas chainsaw massacre and here is ozone studios ripley fine art print signed by olivia which is my favorite print And then down here we have Cannibal Holocaust poster that is signed by Ruggiero, which is ridiculously rare. And then up here we have the life-size Alien Queen. This is the exclusive version and this is by Hollywood Collectibles. I had to repair and repaint her, but I'm pretty happy with the way that she came out. Okay, <clears throat> up next we have the life-size squid man from Slither by Rifgul Creatures. And I love the way this came out. I do need to repaint him a little bit, but um, he's pretty fantastic. And you will also see obviously some legs of someone familiar hanging down in front of him. Then we have life-size the Thing bust, sculpted by Danny Wagner and painted by Saul Alvarez. And they both did just a tremendous job on this piece. Over here, we have the quarter scale Big Chap, sculpted by Bill Weger and paint and finished by Chase at Little Shop of Horrors. I love the way this piece looks. Next we have Life Size Ash from Alien by Howard S. Studios. And it's just a, such a gnarly piece. It 
In the back here, we have a half scale sectioned alien egg with face hugger inside by Golf Studio. And then we have the one third scale big chap by Mamegurai. And I love this iconic post-production pose. Over here, we have a life-size Dr. Tongue from Day of the Dead by Jeff Wahinkle. And I repainted him a little bit, just touched up the blood and stuff on there. But it's really, really gruesome piece and I love him so much. Jeff does amazing work. Here we have a life-size Crypt Keeper from Tales of the Crypt by Creations. Another awesome, awesome piece. And over here, we have Baby Freddy from A Nightmare on Elm Street 5. This is from the original molds, and it's uh, made by David Miller Creations. And he is just freaking gnarly. And up here, we have a life-size The Thing bust from Hex Hill Studios. which there is plenty of gore in this one. Which is good for me because can't ever have too much gore. I mean, really. Then over here, we have life-size Dracula bat. Now this is from, obviously, Bram Stoker's Dracula. And it is done by Darren Holt. I think he just completed the run on these, but such a killer piece. Here is the quarter scale Kessler Wolf from American Werewolf in London, and this is by PCS. I repainted him. And then we have quarter scale Jack. And this was done up by Saul Alvarez. Then over here we have a life-size Harry Warden bust from My Bloody Valentine. And it is done up by Horror Express Studios. So we have a gnarly heart there. And he also breathes too. Somewhere. which I think is rad. Then we have the new ECC, or Elite Creature Collectibles, life-size Pale Man from Pan's Labyrinth. And this was sculpted by Darren Holt. And the paint's not perfect on it, but I plan on touching him up. But regardless, He's a freaking awesome piece, and I love, love, love the movie. Over here, we have a life-size Lord of Darkness bust from the movie Legend. Now, this is sculpted and done up by Darren Holt again. Uh, this is actually his Paint Master copy that he sold me. Uh, the other Paint Master is owned by none other than Tom Savini. And over here we have life-size Reagan bust by Father Phantom Studio. And it is one of my favorite Exorcist pieces. Here we have the half-scale Alien Mythos Queen 
by a sideshow. And I typically don't collect Mythos stuff. Um, I try to stay canon to movies, but um, they did such a great job with the sculpt and paint on this thing. I love the colors that they gave her. I just couldn't help myself from getting her. Then over here is the one-third scale exclusive version of the Prime 1 Dog Alien from Alien 3. And man, they just did such a great job on this piece. I am really looking forward to the big chap and warrior from them to kind of complete the line. And up here is a life-size Candyman hook from Dr. Satan. Here is the life-size The Thing split face wall hanger sculpted by Danny Wagner and painted by Solid Art Club. And you'll notice that this is the same as the full bust, but this is just a wall hanger. I am selling this guy if anybody's interested. Then over here, we have one of my favorite pieces, which is a life-size bride bust from Blackheart Models. This was uh, sculpted by Jeff Yeager and painted by Greg McKellar. And Elsa is probably one of my favorite actresses from the time period. I had a huge crush on her when I was little and I love this piece of her. She looks fantastic. Jeff did a great job on the sculpt. Then over here we have the Aliens wall hanger by Prime One. It's kind of like a little diorama setup. And I really love what they've done with this. Lots of cool detail in here. Down here we have a, another slaughtered lamb sign. This is by Horror Express Studios, and it kind of goes with um, the room, obviously, with it being called the Slaughtered Lamb. I know I have the sign on the outside of the room, but I didn't have anything on the inside, really. So I wanted to do this. And this is one that he makes available to people to purchase. It's not a custom one-off or anything. Here is the Haskell T800 Endo by Prime One Studio. And I love this piece. It is utterly massive and he looks just so badass. I feel like they did a great job with this piece. A lot of people didn't like the lean and I get that. Um, I actually like it and prefer it because in this scene he was charging forward at the end of the movie. Over here is Life Size Creeper from Jeepers Creepers done by, done by a Hollywood Collectibles group. Now this is one that I repainted to make it look more like the end scene of the movie in the police station where he had grabbed him. But I really like this piece a lot. Then over here we have the one-third scale ECC Marcus from Underworld. And this is a favorite piece of mine. He's utterly massive and he just looks amazing. This is one of ECC's better pieces in my opinion. Over here we have life-size Fluffy the Crate Beast from Creepshow. Now uh, this was sculpted by the man himself Tom Savini but uh, it was put out, and he did that years ago, um, but Trick or Treat Studios had, I guess, gotten the license to sell it, so they did. Um, he comes unpainted. Um, I actually primed this guy to paint him up, and that's, that's kind of where he's sitting right now. And then here we have Spellbound Effects, the Slaughtered Lamb lamp. I wanted a gnarly lamp for the collection room so he did this up for me. 
and uh, he just does really really amazing work and uh, you can see just how freaking crazy 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 this thing is but I love it and over here we have some Hellraiser life-size wall hangers done up by Gary Tunnicliffe and uh, I'm actually selling all of these if anybody's interested in them I'm just sticking with Hellraiser busts but uh, I love these pieces so we have Deep Throat and the Auditor, Butterball, Pinhead, Chatterer, and then we have Pinhead Chatterer thing. Then over here, we have a very cool and rare piece. Which is the I'd say it's about quarter scale Tremors Graboid. And this is done by Sideshow years ago. And I also repainted him as well. But I love this piece. Which I say a lot, but I mean, I love a lot of this stuff, so what can I say? Over here we have the one third scale Giger Museum Big Chap maquette by cool props which is kind of hard to film because it's in a glass case not glass but like a plexiglass case but this is identical to the one in the Giger Museum just shrunk it down over here we have a life-size mohawk from gremlins this was done up by ECC. And we have a little gizmo in the copier. And this is another fantastic ECC piece. And over here in the corner is a life size pinhead wall hanger by Nico at Sculpture Studios. I have plans to do a back for this guy, but right now he's just kind of staying in the corner until I can get him finished up. Over here is a life-size Kandarian Dagger from Evil Dead 2 by Trick or Treat Studios, and I repainted this up to age the bone stuff a little more. Then here we have the one-third scale Ash from Evil Dead 2 and this is the exclusive version it has the evil ash head but um, I didn't display him with that just because his outfit and stuff doesn't go with when he was possessed we have Henrietta down here on the bottom of the base and Kandarian dagger and Ash's hand a little possessed hand but uh, I love this piece to me it is uh, the best Evil Dead piece out there right now then down here is a life-size I don't know if you guys can guess it before I say it so I'll give you a chance this is a life-size kennel dog from the thing that uh, it's from Howard S Studios and I really kind of I need to get off my lazy butt and put him together and paint him. Um, this is just the casting. All right, so while we're talking about projects that I'll never get to, this is a life-size Kessler Wolf wall hanger by Zorlosa Creations. And uh, I've got it primed, but uh, haven't got to painting it yet. And then also here is a life-size alien face hugger that uh, this is from Hollywood Collectibles Group. I've painted it, or I've primed it, but I uh, haven't painted it yet. It's on my never ending to-do list. And while I'm down here in the corner, uh, I have a couple of these air purifiers. Um, people always ask me questions about keeping dust down. 
I have a couple of these throughout the room um, and they really help out. And the, the brand that I use is a Winex Plasma Wave and they really help out. And then finally over here is Life Size Alien Egg by Sideshow. And this was from AVP, but I removed the base and made my own base for it. Uh, and I'm really happy with the way that it turned out after I reworked everything. All right, guys. So up next, we have the Life Size Mother Bust from Psycho by Andrew Santiago. And uh, in the back here, you will see numerous, mostly quarter scale figures and box sets to kind of keep behind everything. And kind of look at those as I go along. But up here, we have Life Size Poltergeist Clown from Super Mongrel Studios. I had to rework this guy quite a bit and I still need to finish up um, modifying the face paint but uh, I'm really loving how he's turned out so far it's one of the things that truly terrified me as a kid and the cool thing about this one is is that it's a uh, has the evil face on the back but I prefer to display him with just the happy face that he had in the rocking chair then over here we have the quarter scale Myers exclusive from Pop Culture Shock or PCS, I should say. And uh, there's a lot of opinions on this piece, but um, I really like it. And then over here we have the quarter scale Leatherface exclusive by Sideshow. And this thing looks so rad. I think PCS is working on a third scale of him, but um, it's going to be hard to beat this guy and then the pretty woman by Sideshow. And over here we have the quarter scale Freddy Krueger by Sideshow. This is the exclusive version, although I prefer to display him with the doll. I think the skull is an odd choice. Um, I feel like if anything that the doll should, been, should have been the exclusive for him. And then over here we have the quarter scale Jason Voorhees by Sideshow. Which is a killer piece. Pun intended I guess. And uh, But all four of these guys just look fantastic together in my opinion. And then of course we have all of the quarter scale figures and box figures back here. Uh, we even have a Reagan signed by Linda Blair. Then we have Life Size David from Lost Boys Bust by Moss Hogs with the original sculpt being by Bobby Causey. All right, so moving on, we have a few Hellraiser life-size busts. Uh, this is life-size pinhead by Hammond Sculpt. And here is a life-size chatterer, also by Hammond Sculpt. And then we have a one this is probably my favorite hellraiser piece is the surgeon and this is done by diluted concepts which they just did such a killer job with this piece he looks utterly fantastic and then we have the ill-fated dr chenard from hellraiser 2 and this is done by hellbound busts And over here, we have Pinhead and Blade. 
This is these guys are done by full moon. And then over here we have quarter scale the howling exclusive by PCS, which I repainted as well. Because it was rather flat paint on him. All right, so here we'll get into some of the boxed action figures. Um, we'll go through the ones that are behind the details at the end. I kind of just stack them all in here, uh, just to save space. This set is signed by Bill and Sid. Then we have Linda Blair signed Reagan. And Heather signed Nancy. This one isn't signed, I just like it, so I put it up there. And we're here we have a Sid signed House of a Thousand Corpses. And this one he signed for me just I mean pretty much right before he passed. So it's special to me. Moving on, we have Lord of Darkness, signed by Tim. And we have uh, Steve Dash, signed Jason. And of course, Robert, signed Freddy. I'll step back and look at this row of mostly NECA figures. And it kind of comes around here. Down through there. Then we have the six scale Blitzway Ghostbusters four pack and the six scale Blitzway Ecto one. Then here is another angled shot of the Ecto. And I, I love these figures that they did. I mean, it's the best Ghostbusters set out there. Not exactly horror, but uh, holds a special place for me. So it stays. Then here we have more action figures. Mostly uh, NECA and Mezco. Now, I'm not a reseller. So don't think that just because they're in boxes, I'm a reseller. Uh, it's just the easiest way to store so many figures. When you have over 500 figures, uh, you really run out of space quick, especially when you collect other things. So in boxes is where they stay. Then over here, we have Clive Barker's Tortured Souls. Six scale figures. Now these are done by McFarlane back when McFarlane ruled the action figure market. And behind here, of course, we have more action figure stuff, core scale alien stuff with a Super 8 thrown in. We have a little reanimator display by Nightmares Unlimited. Christine Carr. And then we have a Campbell Holocaust statue. And that card is signed by Bruguero as well. Campbell Holocaust needs more stuff. I'd love a life-size bust of this. All right, so now we have a bunch of just random action figures and stuff piled in the back here. Stuff that doesn't really fit in my Tetris method of stacking figures. Just a bunch of oddball size boxes and stuff. And down here we have the reanimator finger doodle uh, by Monstars. Um, I repainted this guy, but uh, I think he's pretty rad. And then we have Ghoulie's statue from Full Moon. He's just a little guy, but I love him. Then over here we have the three alien figures. Um, Big Chap, Warrior, and Dog Alien. 
And these are all by Kotobukiya, but they're probably some of the best figures out there. Especially that big chap is just fire. Over here we have a security camera. And behind that, of course, we have Cat's Eye Troll from Nightmare Reality Studio. Speaking of cameras, um, people ask how to keep this stuff safe. Um, I have security cameras uh, all over the house and in this room. And then also uh, I insure my collection with a collectibles insurance company. Don't assume that your standard collectibles insurance or standard insurance, home insurance, is going to cover collectibles because they don't. You will not get the value. You have to go to a special collectibles insurance. <clears throat> so anyway, here is the Diamond Select OG Pennywise, which for an expensive figure, I think came out really well. We have the Killer Gingerbread Man from Krampus from Image Motor, which I think is just a fun piece. And we have Pennywise in a Box by Diamond Select. So again, Diamond Select does like really good pieces. Now, these are inexpensive PVC pieces, but I love them. And we have Phantasm Sphere that I got from a collector's set. And then we have Freddy Gloves from Nightmares Unlimited in the back. All right, guys, going on to the Detolfs. Um, I've opened up the doors to try to reduce glare for you, um, but it is what it is. You will see action figures behind the Detolfs all stacked in there. Uh, I will go over those with you unobstructed after we go through all the Detolfs. Here is Old Reverend Kane from Poltergeist 2 by Carly Gates Creatures. And down here we have Quarter Scale Bride and Monster from Sideshow. It's old school Sideshow. And then I have the base that ties them together. But I love that piece. And over here we have old Dr. Tenard. Now this is the NECA statue. I'd say it's probably close to 6th scale, 5th scale or 6th scale, somewhere in there. But he looks pretty freaking rad. Here we have the 6th scale Marcus from Underworld by Star Ace. This is the exclusive with the base. And I feel like they did a great job on this. And we have the quarter scale Undying Carcass from Sideshow. Um, amazing piece, a slept on piece. I feel like uh, more people should have this in their collection because he's so freaking gnarly. And over here we have the affable caretaker from Grey House Studios. And uh, Grey House just does amazing work. It's just absolutely impeccable. But I try to always stick to movies, but and make certain exceptions for pieces like this. Over here, we have the six scale Blitzway lectors. We have the prison uniform and straight jacket versions. These are two awesome, awesome figures. I ended up adding blood to him to duplicate the scene where he beat the police officer. And then just for fun, we have Jeffrey Dahmer, Cocktail Weenies. And down here, we have Connor DeLess's life-size Reverend Kane from Poltergeist. And he did an amazing job on this. And it's probably the favorite piece of mine. Down here we have the inner jaw from the dog alien. This is cast from the movie molds and this is done up by Little Shop of Horrors. And he did just an amazing job on that. And down here you will recognize that this is the red armor helmet from Dracula. 
And this is cast from the movie molds. Um, this is a fiberglass helmet. Uh, I still need to paint and weather it. Uh, but again, you guys know I have a laundry list of things I need to repaint. But I love this helmet. Down just below the TV, I have the Big Chap Alien Head by Cool Props. This is another favorite piece of mine. I know I say that a lot. And it has a uh, cert that's signed by Giger. Then back here, we have old McFarlane Giger and some Mezco Fox stuff. Down through here, we have NECA's Friday the 13th box set, Texas Chainsaw Massacre box set, Soda Toys The Thing box set, and NECA's Hellraiser Cenobite Lair box set. And then finally back here we have Hellraiser Dr. Tenard box set and Friday the 13th Mesco Jason. Here we have the Karloff Mummy quarter scale statue by Sideshow. It's a somewhat of a rare piece and a favorite of mine. Then we have the life-size Patient Zero bust from Sideshow. And uh, <clears throat> this is one of my favorite zombie busts. Um, the modeling that they did on the skin and everything, like it's just really, really great work by them. And uh, I mean, both those pieces are from Sideshow's heyday when they were just pumping out killer stuff. Here is a little grouping of alien stuff, obviously. Back here we have the life-size alien chest burster from Hollywood Collectibles that I repainted. Up front here we have a half-scale face hugger specimen um, from Aruga Chronicles, which is a Russian company. They only did about 20 of these. And then here is the one-third scale dog alien from Prime 1 bust. Next we have the six scale Mars Attacks alien ambassador and warrior from Hot Toys. And then in the back here I did up a alien model kit by Mobius when I had time for that kind of stuff. Over here we have kind of my exorcist tribute. And uh, the life-size Reagan is sculpted by Mark Van Tyne and painted by Saul Alvarez. And then in the back here we have alternative images of a Zuzu statue about 13 inches or so. And then up here we have the Pazuzu relic and that was painted up by Saul. Down here we have Big Ben from the movie House and this was done by Freakland Shop in Spain. And down here we have the it's about quarter scale Pale Man from Pan's Labyrinth. Now this was done by Gentle Giant and has really become a coveted piece over the years and one that I really love. Here is the life-size Talkie Tina from the Twilight Zone. And uh, this was done by Biff Bang Pal and I absolutely love her. She was kind of, for me, the first possessed doll that I had seen. And um, yeah, I love her. I think that this one came out a lot better than the uh, Tots that was done later on. Over here we have the infamous Stairs Corpse from Night of the Living Dead. 
and this was done by Misshapen Monsters. This is a life-size piece. Then over here we have a bloody corpse. Now this was done up by Jim Lawrence, who did a terrific job on it. Um, I ended up kind of redoing the guts a little bit to make them more gory. But I left all of his just amazing paintwork that he had done throughout the skull here. I love this piece. It's really, really unique. Only one done. Then over here we have Ripley from Alien and an Alien Warrior from Aliens. Both of these are 1-6 scale and done by Hot Toys. This is the half scale Pennywise by Prime One. And despite the hair coming terrible out of the packaging, a um, little bit of effort, you can do it up pretty good. And I really love how this piece came out. Come down through here. It's just a stunning piece. And got a little Georgie down there. But to me, it's my favorite Pennywise done. Here is kind of like a King Diamond tribute that I have going on. King Diamond is a favorite of mine. And uh, these are done by Knuckle Bones. And it has some signed King stuff in there too. Love King. Here is a Necronomicon from Evil Dead 2. This is a custom one that I had made up. Um, unfortunately, it's all behind here and you can't really see how amazing it is inside. I have a pretty good review on this one though. Uh, I really need to find a different location for it though so it can kind of be shown in all its glory instead of stuck back in a corner. Here is the half scale Nosferatu. This was sculpted by Kent Kidwell and painted up by Saul Alvarez, who did an amazing job on this piece. <clears throat> um, if you haven't seen the 1979 German Nosferatu, then you need to do yourself a favor and check it out because it's a fantastic film. And over here we have good old Meg Muckle Bones from the movie Legend. And she is half scale, made by Sideshow. Um, I added like a triple thick clear coat on her to kind of wetten her up a bit more. But uh, obviously, as you can tell, I love the movie Legend. Here is Cthulhu in Narlathotep. These are really, really kick ass statues by Gecko. Lots and lots of detail in there. Here we have a life-size Tooth Fairy from Hellboy 2. This was sculpted by Stephen Fournay and painted up by Little Shop of Horrors. But I love all the little detailing in there. Going down through here, we have Pennywise. I think he's about fifth scale or so. Um, this is the exclusive from Tweeterhead. And I really love him because so many of the Pennywise statues have him holding a balloon or whatever. It was nice that they gave you an option to not have to display him like that. Then down here is a good guy doll by Trick or Treat Studios, and this was the Kickstarter version. And then down here at the bottom is a signed Hellraiser Lament configuration. Now this was signed by all four Cenobites, Doug, Nicholas, Simon, and Barbie. And I love, love, love that piece quarter scale creeper from Jeepers Creepers by Hollywood Collectibles. This is the exclusive with the open face. 
And then we have a Factory X Bone Dagger and a Throwing Star. And then a Bee Eating You plate in the back, which I really need to weather. And up here, we have the Sideshow Collectibles Quarter Scale Dracula. which is an impeccable piece. I really love the work that they did with this one. You can really see Bella in the sculpt. Then up here is, of course, Wolfman. This is another quarter scale piece done by Sideshow. again top-notch work I wish they still put out stuff like they did back in the day here is a quarter scale Darth Vader by Hot Toys which is not technically horror but um, he gets a pass because he's Vader and I love that piece up here we have Sideshow's quarter scale pinhead from Hellraiser 3. This is the exclusive. And in the back here we have six scale Pillar of Souls also from Hellraiser 3. This was done by Gary Tunnicliffe. And we have the Trick or Treat Studios Lament Box. And up here we have the Life Size Skull 2 by McGee Effects. Obviously, not to Evil Dead 2, which Patrick McGee did a tremendous job on that. And in the back here, we have a Evil Dead 2 recorder. Oh, well, it's the same one that they used in the first and second film, which is actually Bruce's dad's reel to reel recorder. And on this one, it has um, the, the reels actually have all of Professor Noby's recordings on there, and it plays and works. Love that. Here is the approximately one third scale mutant rabbit from the Twilight Zone movie. This was sculpted by Danny Wagner and painted by Saul Alvarez. And here is just a collection of Eagle Moss aliens. I think I'll probably get to sell these guys off. But I do like them because they're inexpensive and they look cool together. And again, Eagle Moss, Queen, and Ripley Power Loader. Down here we have the Soda Toys Spider Head from The Thing. And I had repainted this guy a while back. But it's probably one of the best Spider Heads out there, to be honest. In my opinion, anyway. Here is a little blood test set that I had done up. I need to get a Palmer kind of explodes out of there. I think uh, some people on Etsy have that. And then here, the bottom is some of the weird stuff. Right in front is a piece called Cycloptopus by Rotten Resin. It is painted up by Gary Tunnicliffe. And it is one of the more gnarly things that I have, but I just love it. In the back here, we have some Sideshow Evil Apples. And then we have some Blue Box Hyper Body Parts. Just kind of thrown in there, because why not? Over here, we have Valak the Nun. This is the exclusive piece by Sideshow. And it's about 8 scale, approximately. But... Uh, I really love this piece. Didn't love the movie, but I love the character. Hopefully the second movie is better. Over here is Resident Evil Axeman. And this is done by Hollywood Collectibles. Uh, he is approximately six scale. But uh, I really love the paint app on him. And on the back here, we have 
the Hollywood Collectibles Group T-Virus Prop Replica. There are some knockoff ones out there for sale, uh, but buyer beware, they're not the quality of the Hollywood Collectibles. And here we have Raging Zombie Studios life-size critter from Critters. Uh, this is made from the movie molds and I love him. It would be nice to have like a corner with just a pile of critters or like a critter's ball. And then down here we have good old Sam for trick-or-treat. This is uh, done by Mezco um, and then I kind of weathered it and filled them out a little bit. But you gotta love old Sam. And we have the life-size Chucky from Seed. This is the Kickstarter version from Trick or Treat Studios. And uh, I think overall it came out good. Paint could be better, but something I can touch up. Um, here is the official backer deal signed by the main thing here is Tony Gardner, which was the special effects artist for the movie. Up here we have the quarter scale Phantom of the Opera, an amazing performance of Lon Chaney in the 1925 film. This is done by Sideshow. And then up here we have Mobius Models Bride and Monster. This is their pre-painted set and I really love the way it came out. I love that scene in the movie too. Here is all of the action figures that are behind my Detolfs. Uh, as you will notice most of these are blister packaging. Um, I like to keep these behind there just because they display better and I can still see the fronts of them. And we have a mix here. Uh, we're gonna see, you know, mostly Mezco and McFarland and uh, NECA stuff in here. 99% horror stuff. Love my little hostile figure. But um, yeah, I love this stuff. Action figures are really uh, my forte into collecting and um, I just can't get enough of them and uh, really these are all just kind of Tetris in uh, it's really kind of hard to pack all these in together um, behind here because uh, they're just different size packaging and stuff so I really had to kind of plan it out quite a bit and there's just so many of them. Of course, Killer Clowns, Dr. Satan. Uh, I love the Tortured Soul series of stuff. Wishmaster, which doesn't get enough love in my opinion. Um, just really, really awesome figures. And this is back also when McFarlane did kick-ass stuff. Of course, we have The Thing. We have Meg from Soda Toys. And of course some Ghostbusters thrown in because why not? Freddy, Hitchhiker. I love Prometheus. I don't know if you guys do, but um, I was a huge Prometheus fan. I really love the Alien series in general. Uh, it's probably my favorite movie franchise. Not all of them are hits for me, but uh, I do like pretty much all of them. And then, sorry, it's getting dark back over here. There's some new figures in here, but most of them are older. Army of Darkness and Candyman. Dog Soldiers. Van Helsing stuff but yep 
I didn't have some quarter scale predator stuff. Uh, again, like I leave all these in boxes, um, not because I'm a reseller, uh, just because it's the way I like to store them. Uh, it's not practical for me to have them all out uh, with my collection as it is. Uh, it's easier just for me to keep them all neat in the packaging. Toxic Avenger, Land of the Dead, The Fog. Another House of a Thousand Corpses. The Mummy, which I love that figure. Soda Toys put out some like really kick-ass stuff. Spawn. Creeper. Day of the Dead. We have a bunch of Hellraiser figures throughout here. Which I really love these sets. Um, NECA is still putting out great stuff, but man, like I, I wish, I wish McFarlane would decide that he wants to compete in the horror market again. Nightbreed, Reanimator, good old Freddy. And then we have some of Mezco's old Silent Screamers line which these figures are just absolutely phenomenal and still stand up to this day and elvira and over here we'll take a look at those three and three quarter in a second but, um got more of uh some tortured soul stuff here and phantasm infernal parade uh, Twisted Oz figures, Elizabeth Bathory, Candyman, just bunches and bunches of stuff. Again, like I'm a horror action figure addict. Um, I just can't get enough of them. I mean, even if I get out of collecting high-end statues and stuff, I think I will always stay with action figures. Again, because it was my first passion and I still love them. 30 Days a Night, I love this figure set, and that movie is just an amazing movie. Tortured Souls, got a little Chucky in there. Faces of Madness figures, Tiny, Devil's Rejects. Saw, more Infernal Parade, Bobo Tap, the Twisted Fairy Tale figures are rad. Some pretty gnarly stuff going on in there, and same with the Tortured Souls. Here is my section of three and three quarter figures. Lots and lots of cool stuff in here. Let's kind of go like row by row, I guess. Of course, we, that's not necessarily three and three quarter, but he's thrown in there. Old distinctive dummies, Big Ben. Beautiful things, Poltergeist. Kingdom of Spiders, Babadook. Babadook. And a lot of these are like reaction stuff. Some full moon here. King Diamond figures. Uh, some Death by Toys. Lots of prayers and Morning Wood. Fog. Candyman fucking bees. I love the custom one off figures. Slayer. We have Evil Dead 2, Possessed Ash Hand, Exorcist, Debbie Dad, Morning Twigs, COVID Figures, a 
Lots of band stuff in here. Creep show. More band stuff, <clears throat> which I guess you can tell that I'm kind of into metal. Twilight Zone, Army of Darkness, Nosferatu, Robocop. Lots of weird stuff in here. I love these Twilight Zone figures though. Such a great show. Then we have some Mego stuff. Frankenstein, Phantom, It, Nosferatu. A couple of variants there. Headless Horseman. Some more Army of Darkness stuff. Invisible Man. Mummy. Frankenstein. I really like these Migos just because they're inexpensive. It allows people to collect without paying a fortune. Let me come down here. Still have my old Tales from the Crypt cartoon figures with a Scooby Doo villain throwing in the Headless Horseman. All right, look at that. You've made it to the end. I am impressed. You must have copious amounts of free time. Uh, I appreciate all the support that you guys give me um, and your interest in the collection. Uh, if you're new to this, hopefully you saw a bunch of stuff that you like um, and that you want to get into and start collecting on your own. Uh, I love turning on new people into the hobby. Uh, it makes me really happy to kind of share a passion of mine with you guys and to get new people involved in the hobby as well. I feel like uh, there should be more camaraderie in the hobby and we should all be supporting each other uh, after all we all love horror and that's what we should celebrate and celebrate each other's love for horror as well as always feel free to leave any questions or comments and i'll be happy to answer them and until next time i'll see you guys later